If you are looking for the best laptop under 40,000 rupees, this video is for you. When it comes to the best laptop for performance, we have these three options here. The Samsung Galaxy Book 2, Infinix Inbook Y4 Mac and the Zebronix Pro Z. In the Galaxy Book 2, you get a 12th gen Intel Core i5 processor along with 8GB of DDR4 RAM and 512GB of PCIe Gen 4 SSD. The Zebronix Pro Z is powered by a 12th gen Intel Core i5 processor with 16GB of DDR4 RAM and 512GB of M2 SATA SSD. Lastly, the Infinix Y4 Max features a 13th gen Intel Core i3 chipset with 16GB of DDR4X RAM and 512GB of PCIe Gen 3 SSD. Let's compare the benchmarks of these three laptops first. In Geekbench, Infinix takes the lead in both single core and multi core scores, followed by Samsung and Zebronix. In Cinebench, Infinix still comes on top in the single core scores but gets beaten by Samsung in multi core scores. In Crystal Disk, Infinix and Samsung both perform quite well, but the Zebronix performs poorly because of the SATA SSD it comes with. Now, as per the performance, both Samsung and Infinix perform really well. Even Zebronix might appeal to some. But the reason I'm not picking both Zebronix and Infinix is because they do not offer driver support. This essentially means that if you format your laptop, you will lose a lot of functionality. In fact, we have an Infinix laptop with 13th gen Intel Core i9 processor in our office, but after the format, the trackpad is not working and the overboost button is non-functional along with the LEDs. We tried multiple ways to fix it, but nothing worked. Unless these brands start giving proper driver support, it's really hard to recommend their laptop. Now let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy Book 2. It's our choice for the best laptop for performance. At the time of shooting this video, this laptop is going for 41,990 on Flipkart and with bank discount, you can get it under 40k. Apart from the specs and the benchmarks that I already showed you, this laptop performs very well in day-to-day -day tasks too. In our testing, which involved browsing on Chrome with multiple tabs open, basic photo editing on Photoshop and working with a lot of documents on MS Word, PowerPoint and Excel, this laptop handled it all without any problems. I tried playing Rocket League on this and at low graphics, I was getting 60 FPS and even after an hour of gaming, this laptop did not get too warm as it slightly lifts off from the table when tilted. So the performance is really good. But what about the rest of the laptop? From the outside, the laptop looks quite good. It has a minimal and stealthy design and almost opens up with one hand, but use both if not occupied. It weighs just 1.8 kgs and is fairly thin. You also get all the necessary ports here, an HDMI port, two Type-C ports, two USB ports, an Ethernet port, a micro SD slot, and a headphone jack. And there's no separate charging port because it charges via the 45 watt PD charger that comes in the box. Since we are talking about the battery, this laptop packs in a 43 watt hour battery, but let me tell you one thing. On a full charge, it lasts only for 4 hours, which is not very good. Plus, charging is also quite slow, as 1 hour of charging takes the laptop from 0 to only 45%. Now, if you decide to choose this laptop, you should note that the battery on this one is not really good. Apart from that, you get a 15.6 inch Full HD display with a peak brightness of 300 nits, and that's a pretty decent display. You get 66% sRGB coverage, but the colors here are quite nice. The keyboard comes with a numpad, and the typing experience on this laptop is just okay. It's not the best, but it's not bad either. Now, one thing that I didn't like much is the fact that this keyboard is not backlit, but you do get a pretty big trackpad and the Windows gestures work fine. The bottom firing speakers have Dolby Atmos support and it is detailed and gets pretty loud. On the software front, it's running Windows 11 and you get Microsoft Office 2021 pre-installed along with McAfee, but it also comes with a lot of Samsung apps, which is good if you're in Samsung ecosystem and bad if you're not. So that's really up to you. Lastly, you can upgrade RAM and storage both, so that's good and if you're wondering, it doesn't come with a fingerprint reader. Okay, so here are the pros and cons of the Galaxy Book 2. You can choose this laptop if you want the best performance in the segment with a solid design and build, decent display and easy upgradability. But do note that the battery performance is not the best and the keyboard is not backlit. If you watch a lot of videos and movies on your laptop, then you should definitely check out the Asus VivoBook K15 OLED that costs around 38,000 rupees. See, all the other laptops come with an LCD panel with up to 300 nits of brightness, but this one stands out as it's the only laptop with a 15.6 inch Full HD OLED panel with a peak brightness of 600 nits for HDR content. And this is actually a really nice display. You get 100% sRGB and DCI-P3 coverage here. And since it's an OLED panel, you get all the good OLED stuff here. You know, the deep blacks, the punchy colors. It also has the best viewing angles and 16 is to 9 aspect ratio, which means content will usually fill your entire screen. Since we are talking about the multimedia experience, let me tell you that the speakers on this laptop are also quite nice. They are tuned by Herman Kardon and are very clear and detailed. Now, I would have liked the front firing speaker on this one because this is meant for media consumption. But as far as the quality is concerned, the speakers are really good, although they are not the loudest. Apart from that, you get an 11th gen Intel Core i3 processor along with 8GB of RAM and 512GB of SSD. And yeah, both the RAM and SSD can be upgraded and there's an HDD slot here too, which is great. Still, performance is the weak point of this laptop. The i3 111 5G4 is a dual core processor, which is almost weird to hear about 
about these days. And yeah, the performance is definitely on the lower side, so it's meant for light usage only. You also get a full-size keyboard with backlight and the keys are fine, there's a decent amount of travel and the typing is okay here as well. The trackpad too is decent and you also get a fingerprint sensor here which is a nice addition. In terms of ports, you do get everything apart from the Ethernet port and there's a 720p webcam and the quality here is just decent. There's also a 42 watt hour battery that lasts for 6.5 hours on a video playback and it charges from 0 to 80% in 1 hour using the 65 watt barrel pin charger. Lastly, MS Office 21 is pre-installed on it. So here are the pros and cons of this laptop. It has a very good OLED display, good speakers, upgradability, a keyboard with backlight and a fingerprint scanner. But it comes with an older processor so the performance will not be very good and misses out on Ethernet port too. If you're looking for a super portable laptop, Dell Mostro 14 is the laptop for you. I mean, just look at this thing. It's so tiny. It is currently selling for around 39,000. And as the name says, this is a 14 inch laptop and weighs just 1.46 kgs. So it can easily fit in any bag or even handbag. The design of this laptop is also stealthy, just like Samsung with the grippy texture, but it doesn't look as pretty as the Galaxy Book. You get a 14 inch full HD display with a peak brightness of 250 nits and it has an sRGB coverage of 68%, which is decent. The viewing angles are good, the colors look nice and bright, and since this is a matte display, you don't see a lot of reflections as well. I wasn't expecting because of the size of the laptop, but the bottom firing speakers on this one is the loudest of all. The keyboard has good feedback to it, but it's not backlit, but the trackpad is decent and supports Windows gestures. You also get all the ports in this small size laptop, be it a full size HDMI, fast USB-A, USB-C, Ethernet port, full size SD card and a headphone jack. Even with this portable and lightweight design, this laptop packs a 13th gen Intel Core i3 processor with 5 cores along with 8 GB DDR4 RAM and 512 GB of SSD. And the benchmark scores of this laptops are quite good, be it Cinebench, Geekbench 6 or PCMark. Benchmark numbers aside, the laptop is quite good for normal usage, be it browsing the web, doing normal office related work or watching YouTube videos. The laptop can handle it pretty well without any issues. You also get MS Office and the famous McAfee pre-installed. Coming to the battery, there's a 41 watt hour battery in this laptop and it lasts around 5 to 6 hours on a single charge with normal usage. However, it only charges through the 65 watt barrel pin charger which takes it from 0 to 91% in just one hour. So here are the pros and cons of this laptop. If you want a lightweight and portable laptop and your workload is mostly browsing the web using MS Office and light day-to-day -day tasks, you can choose this laptop. But do note that it does not come with a backlit keyboard and it's also not the prettiest. Okay, so there's one more laptop I'd like to mention in this video. It's the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 3 that's currently going for 34,000. The main reason I'd suggest this laptop to anyone is the battery life. This comes with a 47 watt hour battery which seems less but I got 9 hours of video playback on this laptop. The highest out of the bunch and the battery charge is very fast too with the included barrel pin charger and it even supports Type-C charging which is a big plus. This laptop is powered by the latest Ryzen 3 7320U processor along with 8GB DDR5 RAM and 512GB SSD and a Radeon 610M GPU. You can upgrade SSD but you can't upgrade RAM here. In benchmarks, this laptop doesn't really score well but in our testing, this laptop handled pretty much everything with ease be it using Word, basic photo editing on Photoshop and browsing on Chrome with multiple tabs open. Apart from that, the webcam is the usual 720p but comes with a privacy shutter. Typing experience on the keyboard is good but it's not backlit. Port selection is nice but it misses out on the Ethernet port. And lastly, you do get MS Office pre-installed. Everything seems okay but the problem is with the display. It has a 15.6 inch full HD panel with a peak brightness of 300 nits with 70% sRGB coverage. It's a decent screen but the viewing angles are really bad on this laptop. Even a slight shift will make the screen completely unreadable. Now this was quite a long video but I hope it helped you. So that was it from my side. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in comments and we'll answer them.